Hi, it's Paul from How to Network. Welcome to the exciting world of hexadecimal. Well, perhaps it's a little bit tongue in cheek. I think some people take numbering systems a little bit too serious. What what we're going to cover together in just the next few minutes is how to nail the questions in the Cisco CC and A exam. I'm not going to go through a, a long uh, lecture on hexadecimal, why we use it, all the features of it. What I'd like you to be able to do is answer the questions in the exam and then move on. You're probably only going to get one mark for getting the hexa hexadecimal questions, if it, even if it comes up. Sometimes it's in the exam and sometimes it isn't. What you'll be expected to be able to do in the exam is convert decimal to hex, possibly hexadecimal and possibly hex to binary. My personal opinion is it's, it's a little bit silly to be expected to do this, but I don't make up what's in the exam. So the easiest way around it is just to be able to, to, to show you how to answer the questions quite quickly. So without further ado, let's have a look. Okay, uh, rule number one, in the exam you, you must be able to uh, write this table out. So write this table out. You'll be given a scratch board in the exam. What I recommend you do when you start is make a few notes about the easy way to subnet and I have other lectures on YouTube about that. Um, we'll just write this out, it's just three columns here, decimal hex binary and then you start off at zero in all three columns. This isn't a lecture on binary by the way, I'll cover that another time but I'm sure the fact you're reading this means you're probably already familiar with binary anyway. Um, start off at zero in all columns and just count all the way up to 15 in the, de in the decimal column and then in hexadecimal, right, hex is a, a numbering system that is base 16. The 16 characters in it and zero counts as a character in networking. We obviously use decimal because we have 10 fingers. Binary is used by computers and computing devices because basically when you've got, if this is a wire here, you can have a signal on the wire. Let me choose another color. On the wire you've got either no signal or a signal. No signal or a signal. And obviously the signal they'll use as a, a one. No signal is used as a zero. And so on. So this is why binary numbers are used for um, computers and mathematical devices. Hexadecimal is like a bridge between the two, so it's supposed to, it's supposed to be a system where we can sort of relate binary numbers to hexadecimal. Maybe that's why Cisco expect you to be able to understand it. Hexadecimal numbers you'll often see for MAC addresses and IP version six addresses. Don't worry that you would be expected to remember long hexadecimal addresses. Um, in the real world you'd use something like a calculator. If you've got Microsoft applications you can go view and then scientific calculator and you can see you've got a hexadecimal, decimal and binary calculator there if you view on scientific. So let's look at the numbers here. Hex starts off at zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Something goes wrong here as far as a mere mortals are concerned. Instead of 10 we have A, B, C, D, E, F. Don't go any further than F. Don't start making up your own numbering system. That won't work for the exam. So just remember A, B, C, D, E and F. Binary, I'm not going to cover all of this because A, I can cover it another time and B, I've got a feeling you should already have a sort of reasonable grasp of this for the CCNA. Alright, so Let's cover uh, what we do when we're in the exam. We'll clear the screen down. Again, you've written this table out. I presume you've grabbed a pen and as soon as the invigilators walked out the room, I shouldn't be saying this, write out this table quickly. If a person clicks on start the exam, your 90 minutes starts. And by the time you finish writing this exam, you've got, say, you've got 88 minutes left. That basically means there's probably four questions that you miss out answering and you'll kick yourself if you run out of time.
All right, so once you've done this, say you, you get asked a question now, and it could be, I'll come up with something like, you get asked to convert the number 100 to hexadecimal. How on earth did you how on earth did you do that and where do you start? Well I'm going to change to a more standard colour. What I'm going to do is write out a little chart here. And again, you can do this, you've got a little you get given a little tablet in the exam. And we're going to divide two rows into four columns. And the column here is your hex column. Now the funny thing about hex is, I said it's a 16 numbering system. So basically you can start off with the number 1. And then the number 16. And it goes up in multiples of 16. So 16 times 16 is 256. I'll just prove it. 16 times 16 equals 256. If you times that by 16, it goes up to 496. Sorry, 4096. 4096. So these are all our characters in hexadecimal and all our values. And obviously, you could times that by 16 and carry on, but I think it'd be a little bit unfair to um, expect it to go further than that. All right, so we've basically been asked to convert this number 100 into hexadecimal. How do we do it? Firstly, you've got this chart here, and then secondly, so number one, and then number two, you've got this little chart here to help you. Once you've written out the charts, you basically take out any calculations out of the equation. So we're converting 100 to hex, and what we can do is use this chart here. How many lots of 16 would go into 100? This is how I do it. You could do 16, 32, 48, 64, if we add 16 to that, 80, 96. So 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. We have six lots of 16, and six between decimal and hex is six. So six lots of 16. We've got four left. So if you take 96 away from 100, you've got four left. So we'll put a four in that column. So the answer to that question, if you convert what is there 100 in hex, it's 64 in hex. And let's just do a sanity check here. If we clear that uh, in decimal 100 if we click on hex you can see we've got 64 there you're not allowed a calculator in the exam by the way all right so let's look at another question then uh, let's see they might ask you something simple actually so I'll put 20, 27, let's just uh, have a simple example, 27 in decimal, let's change it to, um, let's convert it to hex, so we know our values, we wrote them down before, 4096, 256, 16 and 1. Well I'm not too good at uh, math, I'm not sure about you, but I know if we have 1 in the um, 16 column, we've got 16. So if you take 16, oops, sorry, 16 away from 27, it leaves you with 11. And if you count down now to the 11 column in hex, it's 1b. Okay, so let's just recap that again. We want to get to 27, 